He's one of the organizers I'd like uh, to thank all the participants and we had a number of very nice talks already and uh, I hope more talks are to come. Um, so I will talk about uh, applications of holography or ADS-CFT correspondence to physics of impurities. And let me list first collaborators. So mostly this work will be based on recent discussions with uh, graduate students here, Artur Cavalcanti, and uh, former student, Matson, uh, Matson Silva. And uh, some of the ideas were developed earlier with uh, Javi Martinez, who is now in uh, postdoc in Bariloche. Another work was done with Emanuele Oraz and Pasquale Sudano. And some related discussions, uh, some related things I'm discussing with uh, postdocs here, Fabio Novais and Gian Camillo. Fa Fabio will give uh, a talk uh, next week. So we had a nice talk. I liked very much the talk of uh, Marco Sobertaler in, on Wednesday. Uh, he talked about uh, cold atoms and how you can use cold atoms for modeling very different kinds of systems, which in particular have strong interactions. And interestingly, you mentioned quark gluon plasma. I don't know if the, the plan is to ever use cold atoms to model quark gluon plasma. But interestingly, uh, holography or ADS-CFT correspondence is another uh, system that tries to model quark gluon plasma. And the idea is that, uh, again, well, this talk of Marcus somehow uh, brought this idea to me that I can make analogy of uh, holography and cold atoms. So basically, this is the citation from Marcus' talk. So you name it, we make it. And that's not an uh, official motto of ADS-CFT, but in principle, the idea is to use gravity or use very different system, but in a way more simple in order to address complicated qu questions in strongly coupled quantum systems which are not be treated with uh, conventional methods. So ideas CFT correspondence in, in the original way put by Maldacena is, says that uh, some theory, a quantum theory at strong coupling uh, can be dually described in terms of weakly coupled gravity. So this is more or less the cartoon I will use all the time. So there will be my system uh, labeled by some number of coordinates x in, in principle in any dimensions. And I will describe uh, using gravity in larger number of dimensions. So <coughs> gravity is here has this extra dimension labeled by z. And I, I can have my theory which is characterized by some operators, uh, energy momentum tensor, other operators, and it means that on my gravity side, I will, I will, put, I will have different gravity fields, G, G mu nu, for example, the metric, and, and also additional fields. It, it will be also useful to uh, uh, think of a compactified version. So when, when uh, so I, I, I refer to this, this part of the diagram as the boundary of the space, and this is the bulk of the space. So most of you, I presumably s uh, s saw and. Uh, heard some talks about ADS-CFT, so I won't explain very much. And uh, the, the main idea is to use gravity or geometry to reinterpret quantum physics at strong coupling. So you can, the, the, the topic today will be quantum impurities, so this is, this will be a kindergarten version uh, of, uh, let's say, quantum physics of impurity. Before, let me mention another way, if, if you don't like to think of ADS-CFT in terms of string theory, uh, I, I always uh, appreciate the fact that holography was actually discovered by condensed matter uh, physics a bit earlier in, in quantum Hall effect. So in quantum Hall effect, you can also talk about bulk and boundary duality. So if you have a topological state in the bulk of your quantum Hall system, then this state, this gap state, can be uh, dually described, can be encoded by by uh, an edge uh, by edge properties of edge states on the boundary. So the full theory, in fact, 
quantum hole effect, the, the gapped phase can be described effectively by Chern Simons theory. Chern Simons theory is a gauge theory uh, which has this property. So, this Lagrangian of Chern Simons theory is not invariant in the presence of, is not gauge invariant in the presence of the boundary. So, if you want to compensate for this lack of gauge symmetry, one way is to add uh, some edge theory. In particular, uh, well, this was mentioned in some way in the uh, talk of Domenico. You can add a uh, theory. It can be, for example, a theory of a Lattinger liquid on, on the boundary. And um, in this way, you realize this correspondence. And even more, uh, an interesting observation that if you look at the three-dimensional example of ADS-CFT, three-dimensional gravity, three-dimensional gravity is classically equivalent to Chern Simons theory, but with a special gauge group, so it's a non-abelian and also non-compact group. Um, but in principle, this version a of ADS-CFT correspondence is very close in spirit to quantum Hall effect. Okay, um, so I would like to start just reminding you uh, one of the very interesting results of ADS-CFT, namely the Rio and Takayanagi proposal for calculating the entangled entropy. Let's assume that we, s uh, we s split our quantum system in uh, partition in two parts. So there is, there is uh, region A and region B, the complement. And the way, one way you can characterize the entanglement between degrees of freedom in A and the degrees of freedom in B is to calculate the von Neumann entropy, the entangled entropy, which is given as uh, minus trace rho A log rho A, where rho A is, is the reduced density matrix. So the proposal of Rio and Takayanagi was to, well, if you think of, if you have this idea that you have some system on the boundary here and you want to somehow encode the system using, using the bulk, then apparently for this region A, there will be part of the bulk which sort of encoded by physics in A and, and, and a, a complement which is encoded by physics in B. So there is a question how uh, the boundary between A and B is, is uh, continued into, into the bulk. So the proposal of Rio and was that you should consider all different surfaces that are homological to A, so which means has the same boundary as A, and compute the area of the surfaces and take choose the, the surface with minimal area, and this will compute the entangled entropy of A and B. And one property which is immediate here is the reciprocity, reciprocal property of uh, entangled entropy that S of A is equal to S of B. And in fact, there are many other interesting properties. Uh, holographic theories, they One interesting property, for example, of entangled entropy is called uh, strong subadditivity, which is, well, Im an important property in, uh, in quantum information theory. And in quantum information theory, uh, it is very difficult to prove this strong subadditivity. But in case of uh, holography, it's a very simple kindergarten, basically, calculation that proves strong subadditivity. So there are many interesting properties that holographic entanglement entropy satisfies. And in terms of quantum information theory, the holographic models, the subclass of different quantum theories with, which, which with certain properties. So let's do the example, a simple example in the uh, case of one plus one dimensional system. Let's take A to be a segment, which means the dual theory is, 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 a, C, CF, is a theory gravity in three-dimensional anti-deceder space. This is the metric of uh, three-dimensional anti-deceder space. It's almost a uh, flat space with just additional conformal factor. In this, in this coordinates, the surfaces of minimal area, well, this is, they have to be one-dimensional. So these are lines that of minimal length. These are geodesic lines. And in this coordinates, these geodesic lines are just circles. So if you compute the length of the circle, well, actually, it is divergent because the, me the me metric flows to the boundary when z goes to 0. Metric here is singular. So you'll have uh, the length of the curve will be, will be singular. 
and you need to regularize it. So the simple way just to put a cutoff and compute the length from, uh, let's say, from this point to, to this point. The general result is, is something like this, and then you can compute, take the abs uh, limit epsilon goes to zero and extract the most divergent piece, and the most divergent piece uh, matches known, well-known results in uh, CFT calculations. So for this, you need to use this uh, remarkable f relation which was discovered in the 80s, so it, it is not originally was attributed to ADS CFT by, by Brown and Anno, but using this uh, uh, identification, you derive the standard formula for entanglement entropy. And you can do more examples. You can consider, for example, you can turn on temperature in your theory, which in, in terms of ADS CFT means that you need to consider a black hole solutions, so there is some small modification of original ADS metric. You can also compute the, ge the length of the geodesic line, and again, you'll, you will reproduce the standard result from a CFT calculation. So in the CFT calculation, this formula is obtained by a simple conformal transformation, which means that, well, ADS uh, geometry respects conformal transformations. So in a way, you can also see how the, the conformal transformation in CFT can be uh, reformulated as conformal transformations in, the, in, in the gravity, in three-dimensional gravity. So today, the idea is to consider physics of systems with the boundaries. So some people also address this question, uh, how to describe how to use ADS-CFT and describe systems of the boundary. And one particular proposal was uh, brought by Takayanagi. He suggests, so let's consider uh, a system on the boundary, system M, which has some boundary P. And again, similar to entanglement entropy, we have to extend this boundary in some way to, to the bulk. So what would be the natural choice of, of this boundary Q? It somehow should be compatible with the boundary conditions you put in your theory on, on the boundary of ADS. So we need some prescription to calculate the surface Q, which means also uh, finding uh, induced metric uh, on, on this surface. So mathematically, just this is an equivalent problem. Well, standard boundary conditions in, in gravity is given by this Gibbons Hawking action. You can, so this is just uh, Einstein-Hilbert theory with cosmological constant in any dimension. And this is some boundary term. If, if you take the variation of this action, you'll find that uh, the variation is proportion, <laughs> proportional to this particular combination of uh, what is called an extrinsic curvature tensor and the trace of extrinsic curvature tensor. And HAB is the restriction, the pullback of the metric in, in the space to, to, to the boundary of the space. So if you want to define your uh, variational principle, you have to introduce boundary conditions. So standard boundary conditions are Neumann bound, uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. In this Dirichlet boundary conditions, you, you fix the variation of the metric on your boundary. Alternatively, you can also consider Neumann boundary conditions, which means satisfy the condition that uh, well, terms in the term in the brackets is zero, which means, since by definition, uh, stress energy tensor is the variation of the action with respect to the metric, means that you fix TAB. So in this particular example, with no extra terms, it means that you fix TAB to zero, and in principle, if, if you impose this boundary condition, uh, you can integrate your equations of motion, and this is a way how you can explain that your bulk physics is encoded by the boundary and vice versa. So more precisely, the proposal of Takayanagi was to just consider this part from, for the gravity and some, uh, add some additional boundary terms uh, for uh, part of the boundaries on M, on Q, and on, and on P. So if, if you vary this action with additional boundary terms, you'll get uh, 
variation of this piece will give you some stress energy tensor on the, on the corresponding boundaries, in particular the contribution of Q will give you the following boundary condition, which is similar to what is known Israel junction condition in, in gravity. So in order to find the profile of this surface Q, you need to solve these boundary conditions. You'll find the induced metric, and induced metric implies the, the shape of, of the boundary Q. So let's consider some examples, very basic examples. Uh, First, let's consider simp uh, empty ADS3 space, and the boundary will be uh, on the boundary on the boundary. This P will be just a straight line, and M will be just half space. And for the for the matter contribution, so for this for this part, matter contribution on the boundary, let's just select surface tension or cosmological constant, if you wish. So in this case, you can solve equations. You can solve this equation boundary condition for, for the induced metric. You'll find that the in this particular coordinates is just a straight line or a plane, and uh, the tension parameter can be converted into the angle which this plane makes uh, with the boundary with the boundary M. So in in the in 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 the future. I will use theta as the characteristic of this particular as this of this particular boundary condition in my say quantum system. You can consider other examples. For example, if you want to study uh, if you want to study non-equilibrium processes, you can, for example, boost the solution so this would be a moving plane, and it will also have a tilt because of the uh, because of the Lorentz rotation. This can be used in, for example, in, prob in, in modeling qu uh, quantum quenches. You can also use conformal transformation to map line into a circle in if, if your boundary is a Euclidean space. Or you can consider another non-equilibrium problem. You can analytically continue the circle to a hyperboloid. And this, this cartoon just can be a model of, uh, of a phase transition, a nucleation of a, false, of a true vacuum in, in a false vacuum, and, and a further expansion, uh, Lorentz, Lorentz and expansion of the true vacuum inside the false vacuum. Okay, more examples in, in one plus one dimension. If you introduce temperature, then this boundary curve will, will have slightly more complicated profile, so in this case it's an arc cinch, but asymptotically, so this, in this diagram, this part, well, my z-coordinates goes from here to here, so the boundary is here, and here I have a horizon of the black hole, so if, you, if you're far from the horizon, it means that you effectively do not feel the temperature, so here the solution is just the same solution we had before, and the angle is basically the same angle, it has the same relation with the tension of the, uh, of, of, of the curve, of the boundary. Now, how good is this proposal for uh, systems with boundaries in general, for quantum impurity systems? Well, one thing you can compute is thermodynamical entropy, which is associated with this boundary that you introduce. So to do this, you need to compute the Euclidean uh, version of the action multiplied by temperature. So this is the, the action that you compute is exactly this action with extra terms. You compute the free energy, you compute the, the entropy taking the variation of the free energy. And so this is just purely gravity calculation. You compute the uh, Euclidean version of the gravity action, and then you use uh, you convert the, the result, you rewrite it in terms of uh, thermodynamical quantities. In particular, in this result, you will have a piece which is proportional to the length of the interval, proportional to the temperature, and using, again, this brown and no relation between uh, ADS parameter uh, scale L and, and Newton's constant G, you'll get this result, which is, again, a standard result in, in, in the CFT. So in CFT, you'll get 
this piece plus uh, plus the thermodynamical entropy of the impurity, which is on which is only characterized by by specific boundary conditions. In this case, it's theta. So this is the result for the impurity entropy in terms of uh, in, 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 in holographic description. Well, you can also, this well-known result in CFT that you can also determine this, this entropy calculating entanglement entropy. So let's put the impurity in the middle. So this is the, uh, the, 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 profile, the surface Q that separates it splits the bulk into pieces. Now we, we calculate, we use the Rio and Takanagi prescription to compute the entanglement entropy. So effectively what we're computing, we sub we're subtracting the result with impurity. So with impurity, I need to calculate just the, the length of the line from this point to this point. And we subtract the result without impurity, which is just the full, the full arc. So in this case, the result is consistent with, with the previous formula with the thermodynamical entropy, you get precisely the same geometrical uh, formula. So again, so in CFT, in general, what you would expect is, is to have this uh, universal log part, then the part which only depends on the boundary conditions, so that's why I put this G function which is, which is characterized by theta and some non-universal piece. So that's exactly what you get in, a, in holographic calculation. And you can also consider different examples in, in this simple one plus one dimensional case when again, it's, it's, it, it is in fact the result of conformal transformations, but it is slightly less trivial to, to see this in terms of curves because if you consider different geometry, it means that this, for example, the, this boundary will, be, will bend a bit. This, the, this is not an arc of a circle anymore, but it's actually more dif different uh, it's a more complicated uh, curve. You have to calculate, find the intersection point. Intersection point in general is not given by a simple solution, but in the end, the result is again the same. Uh, the result for the entanglement, uh, for the uh, impurity entropy. Okay, so you can also notice the following feature of this of this simple. Uh, set up that you can consider, well, theta, so my system is on the left here. Theta is an external angle. I can look what happens at different theta. So first one, theta is just uh, 90 degrees. It means that actually, well, the surface tension in this case is zero. So it is like having no impurity at all. If theta is more than pi over two, so in this case it would be a line in, in, in this segment, you'll get impurity entropy negative. So effectively, uh, impurity will remove some number of degrees of freedom from your system. When theta is less than, uh, less than pi over two, the, impurity, the contribution of impurity is positive. So this is like having attractive and repulsive interaction. So one will remove degrees of freedom from your system and the other one will, will add some degrees of freedom. And you can compare it further with uh, some known results in, in, for example, numerical calculations. So let's consider now uh, a compact version. So this is my boundary. It used to be a circle. I just cut it into halves by putting an impurity here and another impurity here. So then I have to convert my solution, which I used before, a uh, simple line solution in, in this compact case. So in compact case, you'll have a curve which is not, it, it will not be a line anymore, so the, the, the boundary Q goes like this if theta is more than uh, 90 degrees. And if theta would be less than 90 degrees, it will just be the same thing, but on the other side of, of, this, uh, of the diameter. So if I try to compute now entangled entropy of, of the intervals, for example, of this interval, there are two situations, so theta can be either more than uh, 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees, and in one case, my, uh, well, the, the entanglement entropy is zero, so in this case, when theta is more than f uh, 90 degrees, uh, the, the minimal area line, the geodesic line, is actually uh, beyond the 
the, the surface queue, so it means that there is no contribution to entanglement entropy. And in the opposite case, if, if theta would be less than 90 degrees, so the, the queue will go on the other side of the minimal surface, then I will get the full entangled entropy, which is the standard result, C over 3 log delta x. And so this, in principle, this, this is like uh, fixed points of the RG flow, which was observed, for example, the uh, XXZ model. Let's consider this uh, coupling delta in XXZ model between minus 1 and 1. So when it's greater than 0, then so you have a chain with impurity at in the middle. So all for normal uh, spins, this coupling constant is 1. For impurity is a bit less than 1. Then if, if delta is, is positive, this is a relevant perturbation. So if it's a relevant perturbation, it means that your in, en, uh, entanglement entropy would, would be renormalized to 0 in, in the RG flow. And if it's an irrelevant perturbation for delta less than zero, you, the result will go to a fixed point, so basically to this result. Okay, uh, if you want to really see this, how the RG flow works, so before we discussed mainly fixed points, but you can also introduce some RG flow. For this, you need some generalization. So one generalization we we considered it some time ago with uh, Harvey and Matson. Well, in principle, if you try to generalize this problem to high dimensions, if you want to study impurities and boundaries in high dimensions, it's a bit more difficult to satisfy these boundary conditions because it's a tensor equation, and there is a self there's a problem of self consistency. In particular, if you want to look at some simple geometric backgrounds like simple black hole solutions or empty IDS space, you cannot well, find a temperature of black holes. You cannot, well, you, you have to have, you have to consider some very specific choices of uh, energy momentum tensor on the surface. So what we looked at is what kind of, in general, what kind of uh, energy, stress energy tensors are compatible with uh, simple choices of geometries. And it has the following form. In particular, there are three different functions in the diagonal form, and one physically motivated choice is to consider fluid-like boundary conditions on, on, on Q, which, which says that select P to be the pressure, so it should be the same function for two components here in the metric. So this can, this is the profile you, you find, of Q you find in, in this case. You can also compute thermodynamical entropy, which is associated with the boundaries. So again, what you compute here is uh, gravitational action in the Euclidean version. There is a piece which just piece which is coming from the bulk, and this is also a piece that corresponds to the boundary. So you can separate and calculate the piece that comes from the boundary. So that's that's, for example, the calculation for the boundary entropy in the case of this is three plus two plus one dimensional system, and the boundary is again. Is a line, so that's for uh, contribution of twice the uh, contribution of the line. So it's linear temperature. You get some interesting coefficient, which, in principle, I'm not aware if there is any calculation in CFT which these results can be compared. Well, another possibility is to select the conformal boundary condition on the boundary. So to just say that the trace of T menu is, is zero. And in this case, well, that, that was, this example was originally consi considered in by Erdmenger and collaborators. In this case, you get some nice curves. So they are given by some incomplete beta functions. So the complete beta functions is the uh, Euler beta function where the integral is taken from 0 to 1 and incomplete if you take from 0 to, to, to a given value. And these curves, they have a nice scale and symmetry. So they are basically self-similar. You can also generalize. So somehow we, we, we observed that this, this curve in 1 plus 1 dimensional problem, 
or gravity in three dimensions is actually the same curve you would need to compute entanglement entropy of a two plus one dimensional system. And this is actually, if, if you generalize this condition for uh, higher dimensions, you'll always have this property. So if you want to compute entanglement entropy in, high, in dimension one higher, you need to solve the problem uh, of, let's say, conformal boundary conditions on a surface in one dimension lower. So there is some, some relation between low dimensional uh, physics and high dimensional physics and it can be put in this example, let's say two plus one system, uh, le let's consider uh, if we want to compute entangled entropy, we have to take the integral in principle defined in some function which comes from uh, two plus one dimensional gravity calculation. So that's just an observation, it, but uh, there is a feeling that I in some way th it is similar to relation between topological entanglement entropy in two plus one dimensions and uh, impurity entropy in one plus one dimensions. So there's, there's some uh, known formulas in terms of uh, modular metrics that compute these entropies. So it would be interesting if, if, if it is possible to somehow convert this observation into some relation between entanglement entropies and some quantities in, in lower dimensions. And so this is an, a, an example of calculation of impurity entropy in two plus one dimensional system for zero temperature. So we just calculate the, uh, the entanglement entropy of an impurity as a function of the uh, radius of the interval. So this gives in principle, an RG flow of, uh, of, of the impurity entropy. So if, if we consider the angle theta more than uh, phi over two, so this is like having a relevant operator. In this case, the entropy will be renormalized to zero. And if theta is more than, uh, well, I think it's here it has to be less than phi over two, then it is an irrelevant operator. Your entropy will be in, in the end, renormalized to a to, to fixed point value. So just uh, as a summary, some, some outlook, so that we'll, we're working on more examples. Um, so it would be interesting to have more uh, precise definition of theta in terms of, of this angle theta in terms of the uh, boundary physics. So in case of X, X, Z chain, well, theta seems very, very similar to this parameter delta in X, X, Z chain calculation. You can also just compare the results for entanglement entropy, for the impurity entropy in the holographic calculation and, and let's say in the CFT calculation. So in principle, the C is in, this in a way, although this formula is not valid because there are two different limits in which you, there's a special limit in, in gravity which this formula should be understood, so C must be large and so on, while, while this is some exact formula. And in principle, this parameter K is related to, to central charge, so theta in some way is, is this uh, related to a representation or a spin of impurity. Okay, uh, so, one also interesting question in the setup with conformal boundary conditions is what is the meaning, for example, of the length of this uh, curve? So it's a geometric object which has, in principle, uh, from ADS-CFT point of view, has to have some boundary interpretation. So normally it is some sort of a Wilson line. Well, if you compute it, you actually observe that there is a universal part which is the same you would get in the calculation of entanglement entropy and entanglement entropy you need to compute the, the, the length of the arc and here you get the same results although you're not computing the length of the circle and this comes from the fact that actually the main contribution here, the divergent contribution comes from the part of the curve which is closer to the boundary. So in principle this, this length also computes entanglement entropy. And the current conjecture that uh, we should compare it with the well, two-point function of some operator. So they, this operator is basically the perturbation of our CFT when you add the impurity. Well, 
in, it would be interesting also to look into transport. So there were already some talks here at this event where, which discussed transport in systems with impurities. Well, just here just mentioned we had some, uh, with Emmanuel and Pasquale, we had some discussion of, uh, for example, edge current and quantum hole using this setup. Well, this is just a cartoonish picture which says that uh, if you have a gapped system with a boundary, then you have a delta function like current on the, on the edge. And if you don't have a gap, then your, your current eventually go, goes, goes to zero. Okay, I, I conclude with the list of references. Thank you very much. So central charge is uh, a characteristic of, the, of, the, of the bulk. Of in the bulk, well, it, it's encoded basically in in in, in the theory you can see there in the bulk. So you you this is this is this is yeah this is right yeah. So that has nothing to do in principle with the with the boundary physics you just can you start with yeah you start with the action gravity action here and this gravity action here it has two two parameters so there's a um, cosmological constant if you if you're in in, in the Sitter space there's a space with constant negative curvature right so it's cosmological constant the other one is g newton so if you're in three dimensions C is given uh, this old result of Brown and Anor. So what they observed, they, they looked at three-dimensional gravity and they looked at the uh, asymptotic symmetries, diffeomorphism, action of diffeomorphisms at the, at the edge of the three-dimensional gravity in the NTD Sitter space, and they found that the corresponding charge of the symmetries, the form of Virasoro algebra. So this is kind of semi-classical calculation, and from the Spirosaur algebra, you find this exact relation between uh, central charge and, and the gravity parameters. And then there it is known how to um, determine central, well, quantity is similar to central charge in other cases as well. But in, in principle, it is defined by, by G, by Newton's constant, and also by, well, by, by the curvature of, of, uh, of ADS, but in principle, also by additional quantities. If, if you're in super young mills, then it would be number of uh, colors of the super young mills and so on. Well, I think it's probably the other way around. The boundary theory determines that C is in physical nature, and then you choose the general G parameters so that you find the boundary. Yeah. Am I 